Hello, Algebra 2 students. Today we will do 1.7 notes, solve absolute value equations and so absolute value inequalities. Let's start with some vocabulary. Absolute value is the distance a number is away from zero. For instance, if I have a number line and I have these two numbers, well, here's let's put zero here. And if I have one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, and I plotted these points, both of those numbers are three units away from zero. And so those numbers are three and negative three. So negative 3 is 3 units away from 0, and 3 is 3 units away from 0. Notice I said 3 units. I didn't say negative 3 units away because absolute value is a distance, and distance is always positive. What absolute value looks like is it's the, represented by two vertical bars. And if I wanted to say the absolute, what, the absolute value of what number will give you a distance of 3. And so your choices are a positive 3 or a negative 3. So either negative 3, its absolute value is 3, and a positive 3, its absolute value is also 3. Remember that when we're doing absolute value equations. Next vocabulary word is extraneous solutions. So that's a fancy word for false solution. Well, we learned earlier in the unit that a solution, when replaced back into an equation, gives a true statement. Well, an extraneous solution, you do get a solution, but it gives you a false statement. So extraneous solutions are solutions that must be rejected because they don't satisfy the original equation. Whenever we are asked to check a solution, we always check into the original equation. And I will show you when we get to example three. Let's do some examples. Solve the absolute value of 2x minus 9 equals 15. So we learn that the only way to get a distance of 15 from 0 is if the numbers are 15 or negative 15. So inside the bars here, we can only have the numbers negative 15 or a positive 15. And that gives us our two equations. So absolute value of equations work like this. You remove the absolute value bars if the bars are by themselves. And right now they are because there's only a single number on the right side, and that's what you want. So 2x minus 9 can equal negative 15 because we said the stuff inside the bars can be either negative 15 or a positive 15. And your second equation is... 2x minus 9 can equal 15. And now we solve each equation separately. So the one on the left, you add 9 to both sides. That's 2x equals negative 15 plus 9 is negative 6. Then we divide both sides by 2. x equals negative 3. That is one solution. Um, the second solution, add 9 to both sides. 2x equals 24. Divide by 2, x equals 12. And so your answers are x equals 
negative 3 and x equals 12. For these particular ones, you don't have to check them. And the reason why you don't have to check these, um, I usually give you a hint when you need to check. But for this, since you know that the distance on the right side is a positive 15, that's kind of a giveaway that you don't have to check it. Now let's do the second one. Example two. So inside the bars, you're allowed to have either negative 28 or a positive 28. I'm not pointing at the 4x, I'm just pointing at inside the bars. So that gives us our two equations. Students make the mistake of when they write the two equations, they put bars. The whole point of writing your two equations is getting rid of the absolute value bars. So our first equation is 4x plus 12 equals negative 28. And our second equation is 4x plus 12 equals positive 28. And we solve each one. So subtract 12 on both sides. 4x equals negative 40. Divide by 4. x equals negative 10. On the second equation, subtract 12 on both sides. 4x equals 16. Divide both sides by 4. x equals 4. And so your two solutions are x equals negative 10 and x equals 4. Does it matter if we had written the first equation as 4x plus 12 equals 28 and the second one is 4x plus 12 equals negative 28? No, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you're still going to get two solutions. Okay, now let's do example 3. Now notice, I don't say check for extraneous solutions if I didn't mean it. So these particular ones, when I say check, it will require you to go the extra mile so that you get it correct on your test. So let's go ahead and look at this example. Solve the absolute value of 4x plus 10 equals 6x. Check for extraneous solutions. So the dead giveaway of checking is you have a variable on the right side. It's not just a positive 6, it's a positive 6x. So inside the bars, well, you know if you want the distance to be 6x, inside the bars, you could have a negative 6x because the absolute value of negative 6x is positive 6x, or you could have positive 6x. So let's write our two equations. 4x, here we don't want to write too big because we're going to check. So just watch what I'm doing and you can follow. So 4x plus 10 equals 6x. This time I'll start with a positive 6x. And then the second equation, 4x plus 10 equals negative 6x. Let's um, solve the first equation. So subtract, I would subtract 4x on both sides because 6x is bigger. And you want the x's on one side. You could have subtracted 6x, but then you would have had to subtract 10. Here we do it all in one step. So 10 equals 2x divide by 2. 5 equals x, or x equals 5. Our second equation, again, subtract 4x. So you have 10 equals negative 10x. And lastly, divide both sides by negative 10. x equals negative 1. We don't go and circle our answers just because we have two of them. Because we had that variable on the right side in our original equation, that tells us we need to check both equations. So checking both equations, we want to check each solution. So check x equals 5. So when I say check that answer, check your first answer, x equals 5, you check it back into the original equation. The original equation had absolute value bars. So it would be 4 times x, which is 5, plus 10, its absolute value equals 6 times x, and x is 5. So wherever you see an x, replace it with your solution. Don't get rid of the absolute value bars until you're ready to take the absolute value of it. So inside the absolute value, you have 20 plus 10, and outside, or on the right side, sorry, is 6 times 5, which is 30. That stuff is not an absolute value. So 
20 plus 10, again, still in the absolute value, it's 30. So the absolute value of 30, 30 is 30 units away from zero, and that is equal to 30. So this checks because that's a true statement. So 30 can only equal to 30. Now let's check the, our other solution, which was x equals negative 1. And do the same, repeat the same thing, go back to this original equation. Okay. So we have 4 times negative 1 plus 10 equals 6 times negative 1. So we have negative 4 plus 10 in the absolute value equals negative 6. So that's 6 in absolute value equals negative 6. We know the number 6 is 6 units away from 0, but that is not equal to negative 6. That is a false statement, so that is not true. Since one of those is not true, that makes this an extraneous solution. So we must reject this, cross it out. This is our one true solution. And that's how you do absolute value equations. The last two examples, we are going to learn how to solve absolute value, or I'm sorry, the last example, we're going to learn how to solve absolute value inequalities. And really, this is just memorization. If you have less than or less than or equal to, when you're solving an absolute value inequality, how are we going to shade it? Well, if it's less than or less than or equal to, it's going to be an AND graph. And if you remember what an AND graph looked like, it was a sandwich. Just here's a really good way to remember that the word AND is in sandwich. And it's a sandwich graph. So, I mean, you could have an open circle, closed circle. You could have both closed circle, but the graph in between is a sandwich. If the absolute value is greater than or greater than or equal to, it's going to be an OR graph. And remember, OR graphs are two rays. So you could have, again, two open circles, one open, one closed, so on. But the graph would be going in opposite directions. And so if we look at example four, example four, first determine if it's AND or OR. Since it's greater than or equal to, that is going to be an OR graph according to this right here. So this is an OR graph. And the way you set this up is as follows. You flip the sign and symbol for second inequality. So for instance, you take the absolute value bars off. Don't treat it like an equal sign um, because it is an inequality. So you take the absolute value bars off and you keep the original problem without the bars. Your second inequality is going to be the same 3x minus 7. But this time, reverse the inequality and make the number on the right negative. That's what I mean by flipping the sign and symbol for the second inequality. And then we solve each one. So here you add 7 to both sides. 3x is greater than or equal to 12. Divide by 3 x is greater than or equal to 4. And for the second one, and we know it's or, so we're going to have to put the word or in between our answer. Second one, we add 7 to both sides. 3x is less than or equal to negative 5 plus 7 is 2. Divide by 3. x is less than or equal to 2 thirds. It's a compound inequality with the word or. It's not an and, and then we graph it, we graph our solution. And so let's graph x is greater than or equal to 4. Actually, we want to put 2 thirds is smaller, so 2 thirds is going to go on the left. So whenever I make graphs like this, I always put 0 as a reference. So we can have like 0 
and then one, two, three, four, we could put four somewhere over here. And so two thirds is going to be, we can just put it right here. Because it's bigger than zero, it's less than or equal to four. And now we can say X is greater than or equal to four. So I'm gonna graph it first. It's gonna be a closed circle and the arrow's pointing to the right because here is my arrow. And then for the second one, x is less than or equal to 3, the arrow is pointing to the left because, again, the variable is on the left side. So put a closed circle here, and the arrow points to the left. And so there we've solved the absolute value inequality, and we've graphed our solution. And those are our notes for today. Have a great day, Algebra 2 students.